money account. I might even call it a boring money account, where you put money in the stock market index fund and balance it out a little bit with some bonds, depending on age and so on. And don't look at it. Don't look at it for 50 years. Don't peak. But when you retire, open the envelope. Be sure a doctor is nearby to revive you. <laughs> <laughs> You'll go into a dead faint. You can't believe there's that much money in the world. Welcome back. It's a uh, Money Monday indeed on Liquid Lunch on Newsmax TV. I'm John Tobacco. We're bringing you the best of news, markets, and politics every single day. We're coming at you with every single angle. But on Monday, we bring on the money guests. And uh, to follow up with Eric Bogosian, who says he's on the sane left, but he's a college professor, um, we bring in my good friend and uh, professor right here in uh, New York at the Merchant Marine Academy, Paul Barquita. Paul, thanks for joining us at Liquid Lunch. Yes, John, and, thank you. Uh, you have a new book out, thank Market you. Me, How to Market Your Idea, Your Brand, and Yourself. I want to get to the book and sure. talk about all the stuff. But more importantly, you've been, you're in your ninth year at the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy. So you're dealing with students who are going into all different branches of government and military. Mm -hmm. um, but you also spent 12 years as a tenured professor at a city university of New York here in Queens. Um, talk about the differences between those kids and how the climate has changed from 21 years ago to where you're at now. That's a great question. Uh, I think I have a unique perspective because what typically happens when uh, a faculty member is hired and you are granted tenure, you end up staying your entire career at one university where you do not have a, a range or a, a just a, a more of a broad spectrum of different types of students. Uh, 20 years ago, I was hired at CUNY, uh, City University of New York, the largest public institution in the country with close to a half a million students spread over 23 campuses here in New York City. And uh, it was an incredible opportunity because they were not your typical, as I said, uh, community college students that uh, were forced to stay home from school and didn't get to go away. But at, at Queensborough Community College in Bayside, um, we had over 13,000 students, and I would say 63 to 68 percent of the students were not born in this country. And they have come, Queens is the most diverse county in the country, and those students looked at that opportunity to come to the City University of New York as their opportunity for the American dream. And they embraced that opportunity of, of taking business classes to, to, to actually become something. And yes, did I find we had students from over 150 countries, literally speaking over 100 languages. Wow. And it was, it was a great opportunity, and that was clearly, yes, one side of the academic spectrum, um, which was more obviously slanting towards the left, as, as CUNY as an organization. And then I was given the opportunity, when I started my career as an academic uh, in the mid-90s, I started as an adjunct professor at the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy located in Great Neck and Kings Point, New York, which is one of five federal service academies. And then went to CUNY for 12 years, but they called me, um, Kings Point called me about nine, ten years ago to come back and I left as a tenured professor for CUNY which no one ever has done to start my career over again working at the Merchant Marine Academy and as of today I have students uh, uh, speaking on Veterans Day we have students that are um, in active duty in every branch of the federal government in the military and my heart goes out to those students and to all of our active duty and all of our veterans we spoke earlier we cannot do enough for veterans in this country. Absolutely. Let me ask you, Paul, uh, about your book. Uh, you had a book, Market Me, How to Market Your Idea, Your Brand, and Yourself. What are some tips that you can give to everyday people in the business world or even maybe in the media about how they can do a better job marketing themselves? What are, what are some of the common mistakes people tend to make? Right. A, a big part of why I wrote the book was changing a negative perception of what people think marketing is and what it is not. Marketing is this massive umbrella that so many different aspects of business come out of marketing and you need to be able to develop a marketing strategy which starts with awareness. People don't realize that, that you, you ha how do you make 
you can have the greatest idea, the greatest product, the greatest brand, but you need to make the market, which is out there behind us, aware of this great new product widget or invention. And you don't realize how many things are at your disposal when you have to take into effect your, your mix of your, your product, your price, your promotion, and your distribution. And, it, and people don't realize how big that umbrella of marketing is, especially the, the impact of promotion, which means how do I get the word out about your product? Hmm. So um, we had another author, Leonard Kim, his book's called Drop the Act. And he talks about how if you want to successfully market yourself, you got to drop this whole routine about you being the big CEO and all this other stuff and just show yourself to your clients and your prospective clients. Like, people put on these airs, and really you gotta just let them meet you. Is that, is that a good line to take? Absolutely. Um, when I went out to decide to write the second book, uh, I'm a salesperson by trade, and my first book was on a, a book on personal selling. And what I wanted to do here was to, um, is, is to chronicle uh, what marketing is. And it is the basics of getting back to what is called the marketing mix. I start every Marketing 101 course with referring back to the, the theory of marketing, um, which was developed by McCarthy in 1960. And that theory of how do you combine, again, your product, your price, your promotion, which is your message, and your distribution. Um, and it is all back to the basics. And that's exactly what I wanted to do in the book was to talk about the basic foundations and fundamentals of marketing and very specific to be yourself, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about a little bit about the conversation we've been having on college campuses. From when you started years ago, do you think things really are worse now in terms of polarization, in terms of suppressing free speech and open exchange, or is this uh, people making much ado about very little? Again, having that diverse background of being um, an academic, a, a tenured professor at two of the, one of the most liberal institutions and one of the most conservative institutions, be, being a student myself of uh, a graduate of NYU up the block here, um, the bastion of liberalism, as you, if you will. And <laughs> well, we have two violets right. on set yeah. because well. Frank also went to NYU. And will I say it's getting worse? Absolutely. Even as a tenured professor, and when I first started teaching uh, a, a senior faculty, faculty member said to me, what are the two greatest words in the English language? And I, I didn't know, and he said, tenured professor. <laughs> and even today, it is absolutely true. As a tenured professor, you really have to watch what you say um, if you want to continue to exist within okay. the organization. But things have gotten out of control on the average college campus. Well, then I the, might, I uh, might uh, warn you that you, you may want to... Um consider coming back on this show because sure. we are known to get ourselves and our guests in a significant amount of trouble. But <laughs> um, for, for me, this is a very special, our, our followers are probably very proud of us yes, right now. Yes, they will be, yes. Uh, for just a side note, if you're scoring at home, uh, Paul and I played football together. Our followers were cops together. Yes. Um, and we all, Frankie too, we're all from Staten Island. We all had that blue collar upraising. Um, so the pers your perspectives are much like mine, and I'm, I'm happy to know you because you spent 12 years in a real liberal place. Absolutely. Um, and now you switched over, you're in a real conservative place, and you're the type of guy, because you were a quarterback, yes. you were a leader, um, you. that you know how to adjust to all different types Absolutely. of situations. So I want to thank you for coming Great. down. I really thank you appreciate for me, it. Thank you very much. Um, thank you go out there. Thank, thank you. you. And on a personal yes. note, uh, your niece Patrice works on our staff, and she has been a tremendous, tremendous Great. asset. It's a real <laughs> honor to have her. Great to be you here. You go out and check out this book, Market Me, How to Market Your Idea, Your Brand, and Yourself. Um, and you're going to learn a lot about marketing. You're going to learn a lot about a great guy who is still focused on teaching the youth of America. And hopefully uh, he's someone we'll have back many, many times after this. And maybe we'll get the big Paul on here sure. one day because I'd love to get his views Absolutely. on uh, Donald Trump, yes. uh, especially after a liquid lunch. Then yes. we'd really get some. Absolutely. That would probably be the best television we can get. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. I hear he's doing show tunes these days. Yes, he too. is. Yes, he is. <laughs> well, uh, Paul and Rita, hello. Thanks for letting us have this guy for a little while. Thank you for Great. watching Liquid Lunch. Don't go anywhere. We're going to come back right after this with Ali Sinar. We're going to talk about all this craziness that's going on in, in the Middle East. And uh, Ali Sinar is uh, the president of the Turkish Heritage Organization. We missed him last week, but we got him back today right after this. Thank you.
Thank you.